Greetings, fellow nerds. Welcome to another MTG Nerdful video where we are doing some Forgotten Realms standard. This this set is looking awesome. I think there's a lot of new creativity that can go into it. Minus the facelift, he faceless heaven can't w lose the game combo. We don't talk about that. But um, with that in mind, um, I think I have created a Dargan dog. I mean, dragon god. A bit of Dargan dog. Dargan dog. A uh, deck that um, I think is feasible and standard and it's using Tiamat. I mean, who thought that Tiamat could be playable in standard? Again, this is a best of one, so keep that in mind. Um, but I think um, this is a good deck. It's a little bit more four color focused um, with a more heavy emphasis on Jeskai colors, um, but still good nonetheless. And then we have multiple ways of providing that fifth mana for the swamp mana that we need. So um let me show you what we're working with but before we get go ahead and get started we're on the way to 300 subscribers um would really love your help getting there um i'm also live on twitch um i've been focusing on that a lot as well so you can follow me on twitch where i'm usually arrive live <laughs> from 7 30 to 10 30 um and i'm playing magic valorant uh some kingdom hearts right now actually so lots of lots of fun stuff happening on twitch so check out the description um and yeah be sure to follow again and subscribe like alarm bell so you can see more uh wacky decks that i like to do in standard so all right that's enough of that let's go ahead and get started let me show you what we're working with so five color dargans really more four color if anything we we're really splashing the swamp um to play team up but we got four dragons disciple um good two drop we want some early drops just in case we face against aggro decks um and can come out with a two four pretty consistently um and giving Dragon's Ward one is, it's it's a nice uh, addition as well. Just playing one Sidru Shelter, just again for the white mana mostly. Um, I was kind of um, debating with the numbers. Um, I originally had two, but just kind of, again, experimenting a little bit. And I felt like just a one of is fine. Three Dragon's Fire for the removal. And for the most part, we can have it do a lot more than three damage. But this is good uh, nonetheless, so we really like this card. Uh, three Magdas to get the treasure. Again, a good early drop. Again, we can just kind of kill Magda herself just to get that treasure. It's kind of worth it at that point. Uh, so a good early drop in this deck. Three Heroic Interventions because a lot of our dragons can't protect themselves. There's just big, big Dargons. So giving them a form of protection is pretty nice. And I've always been a big fan of Heroic Intervention. So one of our dragons is Nadar. Um, nice uh, to venture into the dungeon with him. Um, actually, his... Uh, this has saved my life on experimentation. Him, the Venturing into Dungeon has saved my life. Four Cultivates um, to get the right color, to ramp, all that good stuff. Two Wandering uh, Trobador. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, again, easy way to venture. It's a little bit expensive, which is why it's only a two of, but still decent. Can also be found with Tiamat. Um, for um, Prismari, um, for the treasure, which means ramp, um, and just has been a solid card in standard. Uh, three Goldspan Dragons, two Adult Gold Dragons, um, another addition to the five drop Flying Haste Dragons, one Inferno, and then four Tiamats. And I'm only playing one Inferno because um, I don't think I really need more than one. Again, we're still experimenting a little bit, but I feel like for now it's good. And the Tiamat, I love it. Uh, great commander card, but I think we're going to see what we can do in standard today. Then we got three Plains, one Island, one Swamp, four Mountains, three Forest, one Craghorn, Crag, uh, crown pathway at one branch loft uh two uh trums one of the teamer or and one of the jeskai uh three world trees um so that we can get a little bit more color fixing and we are playing field of the rune which i really didn't want to do but i actually have been running into enough people playing the faceless haven and uh can't lose the game combo I guess people think it's another easy way, but I don't know. People are playing Field of Rune now. Um, the internet is talking. A lot of people are more than happy to put it in. Um, so, yeah. Um, this hand is... Oh, gosh. I'm not a big fan of this hand. We don't have our red mana, but I'm going to do the risky thing and keep anyway. Um, I could get heavily punished for this. Ooh. Okay. That actually kind of paid out decently well for us. Um, so, it looks like we're playing against... Oh, okay, so there has been a lot of Prismari decks. Oh, wow. Okay, I did not expect Giants. That's so... This is my first time running into Giants since the new uh, set came out. Um, I'm so excited to play the... Um, to go to my pre-release. I'm just... 
I'm just ecstatic. It's it's going to be fantastic, guys. I'm going to enjoy it so much. I think it's going to be fantastic. So one thing I could do is play uh, Magda, but I get the feeling she's going to get yeeted out of existence. So I could be wrong, um, but I mean, I, it, it feels okay. It feels okay to play. Um, and a 2-4 is generally pretty safe from a Bone Crusher Giant, um, as we all know. <laughs> I mean, Dragon Slab can survive by itself too, which is great. Um, again, very tempting to play the Prismari, but I don't think we're in a huge rush to play Prismari. I don't have ways to uh, uh, make use of the treasure anyway, so this is fine as is. And we need a separate red or blue mana to make this a little bit more relevant. Okay, so this guy is actually going like full like giant like he, he's going for it okay i mean i'll just take the four that's fine it's not anything too crazy there is our tiamat huh? okay I guess it would have been worth it to play the Magda and then just get the treasure token, maybe. Kind of, it's kind of a tough call to say, but um, I think we're doing all right. It's not the worst, it's not the best. Keep in mind, once we get to six lands, we don't have to worry about color fixing anymore um, or treasure making, all that good stuff. Um, okay, yeah, giants do a lot more damage. For sure. Looks like I'm gonna get bone crushered here anyway. You can just tell by the way he's hovering. I might run into it anyway. Just see what he does. Oh, there's a red mana. I guess I don't need to run into it. Alright. Go ahead and play. Oh, looks like he has a counter spell of some sort. The Giants get some support. I'm pretty sure they did in D&D. &D. I mean, they were all over the place in D&D. &D, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna do something kind of crazy here. Um, and... Oh, looks like he has some kind of removal spell. He did have the Bone Crusher, as predicted. I don't know if I want to take six, though. I might just have to throw in the Dragon's Disciple. In front here. Oh, and that's going to be a kicker. Yeesh. Hmm. This is certainly a tough call. I can deal with a 5-4. Oh man, but that's 10 trample. Okay. I'm gonna lose the Prismari, but I can deal with the 5-4 trample. I don't know if I can deal with taking double damage for the rest of my, the, my life. So... This might be a quick one. Again, this deck is a little janky. It's 5 color. It's not gonna be perfect. It does lose to aggro pretty consistently, but... You know, we're, we did our best. Um, we got a little flooded as well, um, didn't see any of our mid-drop dragons, which we do have. We have actually five of them, if I remember correctly. So, a little rough start, that's, that's always how we start on this channel. Always a little rough start, and then we just usually just pick it up once again, and then get things rolling with high gear. So, I always lose to, like, the decks that, like, seem to have, like, you think you wouldn't run into, and then you run into them. Like, but then when we face the meta decks, which I prepare for, like, it'll be smooth sailing. I'm going to go ahead and keep this. It's doable. It's feasible. Uh, once I draw a land, Cultivate comes in, and then we're in business. So, um, yeah. So, turn two, turn three, pretty solid. They mulliganed. We like that. Uh, Mulligan twice. We really like that. Not that I would want them. Oh, what's good? Is this a Tibalt's Trickery deck? Is that what's happening? 
That's usually the case if I see more than two mulligans. I'm like, they're playing Tobalt's Trickery, which I feel like most of the internet has stayed away from because it's like, all right, people that did it had their fun, but it's not really that fun, right? Hey, wake up. Why is it my dragon waking up? Oh, is he like snoring because it's like the match hasn't started? The elemental's like, no, don't touch me. I really like these dragon sleeves. They're like super cool. I'm a huge fan. Okay, well, this will be an interesting match. <laughs> and he's awake. He's like, oh, the match has started. I've been seeing a lot of interesting decks, uh, online decks uh, from the internet. So, um, yeah, um, I think I think we've got a good grasp of like what the meta is right now. I'm not like super worried by any means, but always got to be careful when you can. This does seem like a Tibble's Trickery deck. Oh, it totally is. Wow, I have not seen this deck in like for such a long time because I would have figured it like just disappeared. <laughs> and it gets the Tormod's Crypt. Very nice. Very nice play. <laughs> Why are you still playing that deck, dude? Like, come on. Well, I mean, I will take that as a victory, but I mean, I mean, the dude's just playing Solitaire. That's what's happening. And I don't feel bad. For the opponent losing that way. And I did call that it was a Tibbles Trickery deck. Usually if they mull more than twice, it's like, uh, they're playing some Tibbles Trickery deck. Like, I you can bet a good amount of money on it. Alright, opponent goes first. Nothing new there. Oh gosh, I do like this hand. It's just it has not the right Well, okay, it's playable. It's playable. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it for now. It, it it's playable. Once we draw the green mana for the cultivate. Or the blue mana for the treasure to cast the Cultivate, we're set. Um, and in the meantime, we do have a turn 2 and turn 3 drop. So this might not be the smartest move, but I think it works for now. Um, I'm starting to get punished heavily for my decision, but... I'm gonna... But there's we can also um, scry with the, with the dungeons as well, which is nice. So, and create a treasure token. So, actually, lots of good things here. Um, oh, Demir Control. I've not seen this in quite some time. Hmm. Again, putting Field of Rune, not the best choice. I would have probably put that as some colored mana, but here we are, nonetheless. Okay. So, again, I do need to draw a green or a blue mana at some point in the future. We could also play Field of Rune um, to get rid of this and then search for one of our colors which i would not mind at all um for now we're gonna go ahead and um as ward one two which is great i'm gonna go ahead and scry so we want to look for <laughs> anyone but another copy of nadar because he is a legendary um very cool i actually had a dragonborn paladin in one of my campaigns i was really into the indian colors so love it love it love it Probably actually get rid of that, huh? Um, I did predict that we weren't gonna draw land um, of the color that we wanted, but we can actually kind of wreck that just a little bit, actually. Just pretty nice. Let me see what our opponent does here. Okay, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do Field of Ruin. Oh, I was actually supposed to get rid of the dual colors. That was actually a mistake. I actually said it too, and I just. Uh, I just didn't think. I'm going to go ahead and get the green here. Um, You know, I will cultivate because if he's going to counter this, that means we have much more um, better creatures that he has to worry about. He decides not to. Good choice on him. So we definitely want blue and... Black, so I'll put the blue in tapped. Okay, we are in business. I feel like we're doing a really good job actually against the control deck. We've kind of they didn't they haven't had the best start, but um extinction events like 
Not gonna help him all that much. Shadow's Verdict, on the other hand, a very good card indeed. So, a nice play. One, two, three, four, five. I'm actually gonna go ahead and play this. And go ahead and just, just get smashing, yeah? So next turn, I can Tiamat, and if he's holding up a counter spell, then that means he has to deal with another 4 damage to the face. So all our options are really good here. Shadows Verk, still a good card, um, obviously, in this current standard. Um, really good against Rogues, aggro. Um, so, oh, nice, nice play. Very nice play on the opponent. Um, get some life as well. We'll just summon our big dragon here, Tiamat herself. It is a, it is a girl, by the way, if you didn't know. So we'll get Adult Gold Dragon. We'll get our Inferno Star. Um, sure, we'll get another Nadar. And uh, I mean, we're good on Gal Galazeth, but what the heck? I have to discard a card here. Um, I actually want to keep the Cultivate, so we'll discard uh, Galazeth because I don't think we need two in our hand. Um, but the reason I want to keep Cultivate is because I want to be able to do stuff on my turn on a consistent basis. So usually I'll be playing like a 5 drop and then sometimes I want to have, if I draw a land, that'll give me 8 mana. So that'll give me extra things to do. I don't want to like just play a 5 drop every turn. Um, okay, Extinction Event comes in. Again, he's spending all his mana on his turn to get rid of my stuff. So that that's really good for us in so many different ways. Alright, so we're going to go ahead, play the Goldspan Dragon. We're going to attack. So I have two options here. Um, I'm actually going to play the Wandering Trabador. Uh, the reason for that is it's a different converted mana cost, so Extinction Event. Um, for sure he names um, um, Odd, but we still... Um, get to um, have some form of pressure in our hands. And he knows that we have other flying haste creatures as well. Inferno of the Star Mount is going to be fantastic because it can't get countered. So we probably have this in the bag. Okay. So I'm curious to see what he's going to do. I'm going to go ahead and play the Adult Gold Dragon um, because... I want him to spend mana on his turn. The more we can get removal spells, things that like I don't want to see out, um, the better for Inferno mounts to kind of just do what he needs to do. All right, perfect. So we cinch out that again. This is this is this classic nerd fill kind of video. Like the whole like I lose the first round for whatever reason to a deck that like has like disappeared off the face of the meta, and then I usually do a pretty good job against beating the actual meta decks. Because I do prepare, I do my research, I see what the internet is saying. Um, I actually totally forgot that Field of Rune was in standard. Um, and yeah, so I actually have my own thoughts on how to kind of balance that card in MTG Jr. in the best of one, the Faceless Haven uh, Book of Exalt, I believe that's what it's called combo. Um, I think the simple solution really is to just ban the Book of Exalt in the best of one, and a best of three, do whatever you want. Because in the best of one, most people aren't playing land destruction, and it's kind of, I think, unfair to ask them to consistently play that. Um, I think that's a little ridiculous. Um, I don't know, but let me know what your guys' thoughts are. I did keep this hand. I don't know how I feel about it, but it will do for now. Um, it's very slow, but I'm going to just try it out. Yeah, I think in a best of one, it should be banned because... Yeah, I mean, again, those are just my thoughts. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, assume that like I'm the biggest genius in the world or whatever. But that's just, it is all just my opinion. Probably gets countered here, which is fine. I don't care about the one in Trebador. <laughs> it's just a four-two. It's my weakest dragon, probably. I would say. Sure. It's countered, no problem. Midnight clock, okay. World tree again? Well, I've got nothing better to do, so put it intact. So again, this was an extremely slow start. I probably should have mulliganed just in hindsight, 
Um, but I'm okay with where we're at. Now I'm kind of regretting not playing multiple Infernal Star mounts, but what can you do? Okay, there's Prismari himself. Right, well, the more counters I get rid of him, get out of him, the better. Yep, there's the Mystical Dispute. All for one mana, very nice. Oh man, that's going to hit Tiamat pretty hard. And the dragon, our little baby dragon is not happy with the outcome there. I may have to, uh... I may have to give up this match. I, I might have done too slow of a start here. Um, and it's coming back to bite me. I don't know what he's doing though, to be fair. So, I'm not going to give up quite yet. It just doesn't seem all that fantastic. I'll put it that way. Alright, there's the Goldspan Dragon. I'm going to play him. I'm sure there's a counter spell. I'm running into it. I'm well aware. But, I don't mind. There's the Essence Scanner. Because if we can land a Tiamat, um, that means we'll draw five cards essentially. So that will be kind of like our saving grace. So it's just a matter of getting him to, I don't know, do something on his turn that... Oh man, it just doesn't seem likely though. Maybe he's running out of counter spells. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he has another one. Um, let's see. It probably lets this one live, no? He's thinking about it, because I have five mana, right? Um, so he has to... I think he has to safely assume that, like, oh man, he might have a five mana dragon. Unfortunately here, Midnight Clock is going to get the 12 counters. Again, I kept the super slow hand... Now he knows to save the counter spell for the Tiamat, but I think that's okay. I don't know what this deck is doing quite yet, so it's got a fresh hand. I don't play gods either, so that's not going to quite work out for me. I mean, I don't know what this deck is doing. That's the thing, right? It's it's too early to say, should I give up? Where's the Cultivate? That might actually be super important. I'm actually going to play the Cultivate. reason for that is because it gets land out of my deck and it lets increases the probability of me drawing important cards. So I'm okay with that. Um, let's, I mean, it doesn't matter since we have all our colors, but just in case. We're actually going to get three lanes out of our deck because I'm probably going to feel the rune here once he taps out. Sure. That's totally fine with me because it's like, all right, I mean. I could do Hexproof. I don't know if that really matters because I'd rather save it. I mean, it's just two points of damage. Shark Tornado is pretty bad. <laughs> That's the card he was looking for. That actually makes a lot of sense. Um, hmm. I 
Okay, I know he has a counter spell. He knows I have this. Alright. Feels pretty good. I got I got Prismar to resolve. That doesn't seem bad. It has Ward 1, which is nice. Um, I do actually Hexproof here, which seems bizarre. And then I do this. Seven damage to a 2-2 two -two shark. He did pay the extra one. This is a very slow match, guys. I apologize. I have a more fun version of Mono Blue. I'm, some of you might have seen it already in the intro screen. So, Okay, decides not to do anything. Get all his cards back. He has 10 mana to work with. Oh dear. Hmm. Question is, what will you do now? Pays the extra one, sure. I'm gonna cultivate. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think we've almost run half our lane, so everything we draw from here on out should be a little bit more relevant. Ooh. That was mighty unfortunate. Uh, you know what? I am going to give this to the opponent. Um, we were a little too slow, unfortunately. And after the Shark Tornado lands, and we still don't have a good board presence and we can't land Tiamat, eh, it's, I'm just going to give it to him. I want to show you guys a more exciting video. So I'm okay taking the loss there. Let's let's get in for one more. Um, so yeah, was that a mistake? I would say so. I'm definitely willing to admit that was a mistake to keep a very slow hand. Um, you want some sort of mid-range to keep you a little bit alive in certain circumstances, or, um, I'm gonna keep this. Um, I know it's super risky, but I'm already five color. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> um, so I could put in more pathways. That is certainly an option, except it just makes our cultivate so much weaker. So it's a bit of an interesting choice to make. Um, we just seeing some interesting cards here. Um, I didn't know you could touch all the dragon treasure. Oh. Hey, wake up. Does he... Does he not wake up? That's hilarious. Oh, oh. That was actually kind of terrifying. Ah, and as as I as anyone could have predicted, I did not draw a land. <laughs> um literally could have been any color and the cultivate would have just been incredible uh for the most part. So oh he stays awake. Yeah, 
Yes, very well. Very well. Please get your turn three Garuk while I get my turn nothing. Alright, so we do have to scoop here, unfortunately, so. Um I think that was definitely a hand worth risk keeping. I make no mistake in terms of um make no mistake, I mean we're gonna get for one more one more because I want to show an actual game and hopefully the RNG gods will be a little bit more kinder this time around. Um I think it was very reasonable. I mean even my tap land I would have been fine with. Um for sure I would have been a turn behind. But I would have been happy with that, nonetheless. Um, but, again, this is a hard deck to master uh, because it is four to five colors. Um, so, it is not for the person with um, faint of heart, I would say. It requires a little bit more thinking, a little bit more risk-taking, all that good stuff. Uh, looks like we're facing some Winota deck. So I'm going to hold here. Um, very tempting to just launch the dragon's fire but we can wait just a tad bit because i want to see what the opponent is doing um okay now we can launch it because and the reason we can launch it now is because um the selfless saver is already here i want them to use it as early as possible perfect team that's here so i need blue and black really Okay, so we'll have all five colors after this, and then we can play the Goldspan Dragon and then probably launch Tiamat, which should be pretty good. Um, okay, so I did prepare for this. I did prepare for this. Again, this is why we play Field of Rune. I did prepare for this. Um, I am totally fine with what's happening. I'm not going to give up. Um, yeah, this is, this is actually fine, guys. Do not worry. I know you guys. I The Book of Exalts. Yep, did see it coming a mile away. Don't worry one bit, my friends. They've played everything they've had. So, honestly, we're we're kind of chilling. We're doing great. They didn't even attack. Guys, we're about to show them some true terror right here. This is where it's at. So, for sure, we want Nadar. We want an adult gold dragon. Um, we'll take an Inferno of that, and definitely a Trovador. Why not? And then, just for kicks, we'll get in for here. He jump blocks. We're doing great, guys. We're doing fantastic. This, this is, we have Field of Rune as well. So, I am not one bit less worried. And, you know what? Just to, um, kind of ensure that we are getting, um too close to um finding field of oh, guys we're we're fine we're fine we're totally fine i'm not worried one bit easy get on out of here with your mono white book of exalts faceless haven i had the answer anyway on that note we're gonna end the video because there's no better way to end the video knowing that you beat them in two different ways Again, Field of Rune, it's kind of a, even in a four color deck, I normally would never put in a four color deck, but just to prepare for the meta, I think it's the right thing to do. So if you enjoyed this video, you know what I'm going to ask, right? Subscribe, like, thumbs up, uh, notification bell, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitch as well. I've got a great community building there. Um, just um, I interact with um, some followers. Actually, two of them have become mods, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah, follow me on Twitch as well. Thank you all so much for the support. As you know, at this point, right now, up top, YouTube is showing you a video of my most recent upload, and right below that is a video that YouTube thinks you specifically like. Probably a deck you haven't seen me play before, so go ahead, check those videos out. Explore channel really helps me out with the algorithm, all that good stuff. We're on our way to 300 subs. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you for the next Nerdfill.